Oops. So Belmiro, I just made you co-host. You should be able to share your screen. Um, oh, so as okay. a quick introduction, um, this is the first of our large scale SIGs video meetings. Uh, we used to uh, do IRC meetings, but um, we also will semi-regularly do video meetings uh, so that we can have uh, more of a presentation and a theme discussion around a very specific question. And uh, today to kick this off, we have Belmiro Morera from CERN. Uh, we'll talk about uh, the choice between regions and cells when it comes to scaling out your uh, OpenStack infrastructure. And hopefully that short presentation should trigger a lively discussion between the participants. The goal is to share as much, uh, as, as much best practices and good advice and experiences and questions uh, as possible so that everyone can learn more about how to, how to better scale OpenStack infrastructure. Um, from a general standpoint, we like everyone manages to scale out OpenStack to very large, uh, very large infrastructure. But at the same time, uh, we don't have strong documentation explaining how to do it. And for newcomers to the OpenStack ecosystem, it can be a bit daunting, uh, not knowing exactly uh, what path everyone else traveled. Um, so to kick this off, we have Belmiro, um, take it away. Um, thank you, Thierry. Can you see my screen? I can. Yeah, okay. So that means that you can hear me as well. Um, so hello everyone, I'm Belmir Moreira. I'm a cloud engineer at CERN. Uh, CERN is the European Organization for Nuclear Research. And today in this first meeting, uh, in this new format, um, as Thierry said, so we're gonna try to discuss how to scale OpenStack, uh, OpenStack deployment uh, using regions uh, and cells. Um, so this is, will be a very brief presentation just to set the pace for, for the discussion. So when managing an OpenStack infrastructure, one of the questions that uh, operators always have is when should I start uh, wondering uh, on how to scale out my OpenStack infrastructure. Um, of course, there is no special formula that will tell you that you need to scale your OpenStack infrastructure. As almost everything else in OpenStack, uh, this depends uh, on your particular requirements and expectations for the infrastructure. There are, however, some factors that can help your decision. Um, for example, as you add more and more compute nodes into the infrastructure, we increase also the risk that if something goes wrong with the control plane, that will infect all, the, all your uh, infrastructure. So to mitigate this risk, usually what we do is to set up uh, high available solutions, um, most of the times very complex ones for RabbitMQ and databases. Um, usually they are complex, difficult to configure, difficult to maintain and keep running. Um, network partitions in RabbitMQ um, are huge, huge issues in big infrastructures. Um, so if you reach this point, probably you should consider the option to scale out your deployment. Uh, of course, you can have also other motivations. So in this slide, um, I try to enumerate some of them. So of course you have a large infrastructure, you have a large number of compute nodes, that could be a reason. This huge number of compute nodes create a huge load in your database and uh, in your RabbitMQ. Um, and you are reaching the point that you, it's being very, very difficult to continue to scaling up the database and your RabbitMQ cluster. Or in the other way, you just want to avoid to set up all these high available solutions for these components. And uh, you will want to keep it simple. Um, other reason could be that some of your OpenStack components, um, it's being very difficult to scale them. For example, Neutron. So if you have a lot of compute nodes, um, Neutron agents could be very, very chatty. 
and that could be very problematic to, to scale Neutron to, to thousands of compute nodes in the same cluster. Um, another reason could be that you uh, want to partition really your deployment physically because you have multiple data centers in different areas and you want to expose this to users or just logically uh, because you uh, as operator want to organize your resources considering the hardware type, the different features that, that your resources offers to, to users. Um, there are different ways to do this in OpenStack. We'll, we'll try to, to explore some of them. Or in the other way, you want to isolate resources for specific workloads or for specific users. Uh, all of these are good reasons. Um, this is not only to do with scale, but the good reasons for you to scale out your uh, OpenStack deployment. So there are different options uh, to scale out. Um, today, we will consider cells and regions. Um, let's start uh, with cells. So cells exist in OpenStack almost from the beginning. They were initially implemented by Rackspace to help them to manage their infrastructure. At CERN, we are using cells uh, since our initial production infrastructure in 2013. Um, I will give certain example a lot during this uh, short presentation uh, to, to give you a concrete example. Um, in 2013, we had uh, two cells, one cell per data center. Um, and we had two data centers and two cells. Uh, notice that we didn't have regions at that time. And of course, in 2013, this was cells v1. Cells v2 were introduced much later in I think Pike release in 2017 or 2018. So what are cells? Cells are a Nova feature that allows you to partition your Nova deployment. Um, this allows you to share the communication loads of your compute nodes with the control plane using different uh, RiotMQ servers and databases. So as a result, you can increase massively the number of compute nodes in the infrastructure without having um, for example, to manage a complex and central writing queue cluster and a complex database setup. So let's see uh, some of the cells uh, characteristics. Um, so with cells in Nova, we are able to shard the databases and the writing queue. Uh, because we are able to do that, and we have a different control plane per cell, uh, we can isolate failure domains in Nova, increasing the availability of the clouds in general. Um, cells are completely transparent to users, so there are no APIs to, to interact uh, with cells. You need to use the old Nova manage commands for this. Um, they allow you also to dedicate resources to workloads easily um, meaning that if you have resources that were bought for a specific projects or set of users, you can easily map them. Um, so basically these are logical partitions uh, in your cloud infrastructure. And last but not least, they are very easy to configure. So because they are so easy to configure, at CERN we use cells a lot. Uh, currently, we have more than 80 cells in production. Uh, basically, 80 cells that are the sum of all the cells that we have in all our regions. Okay, so uh, a certain example of cells. So this is the architecture of cells that, that we have. Um, so what you see here on top is basically the, the cell API where we have the Nova APIs and the, the, the main controller. Uh, so this is the super control conductor and also the Nova schedulers. Then we have the database for the cell zero, the database for the Nova API uh, cell, and of course the right team queue and uh, the VNC proxy. So I'm just reusing an old slide. Now the VNC proxy is in the cell control plane. And this is the cell. 
the control plane is very simple. So the Nova API for the metadata service right in queue conductor, and then you have your compute nodes. Um, because we have a lot of cells, um, so we don't have high availability in this control plane at all uh, per cell. So this is our choice. What you see here is basically uh, the architecture that we have per region. So that's why I'm saying here that per region, we have around 30 cells currently, and we have three main regions in our infrastructure. Um, okay, so I would like to show you now the cells that we have in one of the main regions. Um, as I said, because cells are completely transparent users, and there is no API to interact with them. So we need to use the old Nova manage commands. Uh, so to see uh, the cells in a region, um, basically you just do at least cells. I'm doing all of this because I don't want you to see all the database details and write team queue connections that also are displayed by these commands. So as you can see here, we have in this region, all these cells, uh, the cell C zero. Then we have all these shared cells, we call them like this, like a normal user authenticated in the CERN cloud. If they try to put an instance, it will end up in one of these cells. This is completely transparent to the user. Uh, groups of these cells will be one availability zone, for example. We have three availability zones. We group them like this. And then we have all these GVA projects. Um, so these are dedicated cells that we have for specific projects. And those projects can only create instances in the cells and all the other users cannot touch them. Um, another particular cell that we have here is for example, this one. This is the cell where we have all the bare metal nodes all the ironic nodes are managing this uh, Nova cell. And these ones are particular cells uh, for resources that have special features. Um, in this case, these nodes are backed up by diesel generators in, ca in case of a power failure. So this was just to give you an example of a real use case of using cells. Okay, going back to the slides. Okay, but cells have a problem. Uh, this is only for Nova, it's a Nova feature. Um, with this, you are not scaling any other components. For example, if your Neutron is struggling with loads, uh, cells will not solve that. So you continue to add more and more nodes into Nova and just increasing the load issues into Neutron. So for example, again, uh, at CERN for a long time, we only had one region. Uh, because we didn't want to expose this concept to, to our users. Um, and because the load on Neutron was starting to be so high that we decided at some point to, to introduce regions in our infrastructure. So that led us to a region. Um, so what is a region? A uh, region is basically an open stack deployment. Um, a completely independent open stack deployment that typically shares the same keystone and horizon components. Um, regions are useful when you want to explicitly expose users to a deployment partition. So users are aware of the region. And also this usually helps them to achieve a greater fault tolerance for their applications because they are aware of this partitioning that in case of cells, they are not. So they know that they can deploy their application in region A and B. And if something happens to A, B should be up because it's independent. From the public cloud providers, this is the image that we have from regions. Uh, but the region doesn't need to be uh, in a different continent or we don't need to have data centers spread between different continents or different countries or even different data centers to set up regions. So let's now go through some of the region's characteristics. So as I said, they are independent open stack deployments. 
users are aware of them. Uh, they can give some fault tolerance for to the applications running on top of them, the OpenStack infrastructure that use them as a whole. Um, they can be used to scale components that can be shards. A good example is always Neutron. Um, however, um, we can share more OpenStack components. Usually it's only Keystone and Horizon, but also you can share other components like Lens, for example, and avoid all the issues of image synchronization between regions. Again, uh, at CERN, we are uh, sharing uh, glance between our different regions to avoid this issue of image synchronization. Um, something that we also do, we don't only dedicate cells to, read, to cells to users, but also we dedicate entire regions to some special users. Uh, so for example, we have the use case of, for the data processing from the LHC. So we have dedicated regions only for this use case. And finally, regions, because they are entire OpenStack uh, deployment, they are much more complex uh, to deploy uh, when comparing this with, with cells. So as I show you the, the cells that we have in one region, now I'm gonna show you the regions that we have in our production environment. So, this is visible to the user. So if I do OpenStack region list, we're gonna see the regions that we have available. Uh, because users are able to see them, doesn't mean that they will have access to all of them. Uh, in fact, uh, most of the users, I will say 99% of the users will only have access to this, to this region. Uh, we have three main regions. That is the batch, CERN, and point date. CERN is for generic use cases. This is the region that I show you all the cells uh, in the previous commands. Batch and point eight, this is regions dedicated only for batch processing data. And then we use regions to test different uh, functionality. So instead of deploying a completely separated OpenStack infrastructure to test, uh, for example, SDN, we just create a new region. And because we need to deploy all the projects, we can have a different configuration to test this functionality. But we use the same keystone and lens. And that gives us um, the ability to allow users to easily give us feedback because we don't need to create special projects or, again, users in these new um, OpenStack deployments. They use exactly the same infrastructure. So we just give the users access to that to those regions and they can, they can give us easily feedback of these new features. So when we have, for example, these regions here, they have a handful of nodes there. We don't need to have uh, thousands of nodes to have a region. I think these regions have five, uh, 10 nodes maximum. All right, so we are reaching the end of this presentation. So should I deploy cells or regions? Um, of course, this depends on the problem that you are trying to solve. Um, if you are adding more and more compute nodes, um, I will recommend that you start deploying new cells because that will allow you to scale massively. But later, if you start finding problems in other components, uh, probably then regions will be a good way to go. More challenging, but if you grow a region too much um, with a lot of multiple cells, you can always split the region into two or more regions. We did this in the past um, because the scalability issues that we, that we hit. So this was just a very brief introduction about these two concepts. Um, let me know your questions. I think this can be a good start for discussion. Um, maybe you will not agree with me, uh, but that's good for discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bilmiro. It was uh, very interesting. Um, we already have one question on the group chat, uh, which was from uh, Seung, Sho, Seung Su Cho. Um, it says, I upgraded Nova from Kilo to Queens, so I don't have any cells in production. 
In this case, is it possible to create a new cell and reassign existing compute nodes to that new cell? Uh, Basically a question it, of how do you migrate from not using cells to using cells? <laughs> Well, if you are still in Pike, it means that you have cells V1 only. And uh, creating now a cell V1 in Pike, uh, if, you, if you want to move forward and uh, upgrade into other OpenStack releases, probably is not the best choice. I don't know what others think about this. Balmira, do you remember when cells was everyone started using cells by default. I can't remember what release that cutover was. I, so they were introduced in Pike and uh, in the next release, I think that uh, became mandatory, no? Maybe, maybe it was that quick. I think it was Okata. Okay. I guess, yeah, I guess that's the thing to say no, currently. No. I think I'm messing up with the number of releases now. Could have been Queens, but yeah, I, I guess the thing to say is that currently when all of your, all your hypervisors are in a cell today, so the Nova compute nodes are all, they're all in a cell. So the trickier question, I guess, is how do you move a hypervisor between cells? Have you ever done that without deleting all the instances, I guess? I'm not sure right. that's possible today. I think I saw something in one of the release notes that said that uh, some version allowed live migration of VMs between hypervisors. So I think one thing that you might be able to do is bring up a new cell and then migrate the VMs across. And then once you've drained you know, the first cell sufficiently, you could then just you know, take hypervisors out and redeploy them to other cells. That might be one way. So we haven't actually done it yet, but this is fantastic talk because we're about to try and start going multicellular where, where I work. So I want to thank Balmira, by the way. Thanks, Chris. I, I think that is supported since Uzuri, the cold migration between cells, but I think it's cold migration. Okay, cold, yeah, but even cold would be yeah. great tool. Yeah, but definitely not Pike, right? So you need to be really close to upstream or to the latest releases. We have two more questions on the chat. Uh, Benjamin is asking, is there a way to scale out neutron like Nova cells in a single region? I've seen some user having a dedicated RabbitMQ cluster just for neutron, but wanted to know if other solution tricks exist. Well, if I can start, I think that is the best having a dedicated rabbit for neutron. We have it. So per cell, we have a, per region, we have around 3,000 compute nodes. And that means only one neutron. And uh, we have a big RabbitMQ to handle that, only neutron. Maybe you have a dedicated uh, database as well, no? Oh, uh, right. But uh, OK, so I, I can continue. Um, so in our case, we have a dedicated RabbitMQ for everything. Uh, for everything, I mean for each component. Um, so each cell has its own private MQ, completely independent. Then the Nova API cell, of course, is also independent private MQ. Cinder, different component, has its own dedicated private MQ. Um, Ironic has a dedicated private MQ. And it's exactly sa the same for the databases. So we don't share MySQL instances um, between different OpenStack components. So RabbitMQ has a dedicated, uh, sorry, Neutron has a dedicated um, MySQL instance, like each cell, like uh, each other OpenStack component. And do you have a separate database per cell or is it the same MySQL for all cells? No, so it's a completely separated okay. MySQL instance for each cell. Okay. One question I have, Belmiro, since this is a, a brief 
uh, pause there. We have multiple completely separate OpenStack installations in different locations. Do you know if we, we could just tie those together and make them regions, or is it that it's too late now? Uh, so I think that should be possible. There's two kinds of regions. So there's regions that share a keystone and regions that don't. Um, it sounds like you've got regions that don't. So in the horizon code, you actually get a drop down before you log in or after you log in, depending on which type you've got. So I think in some sense, you already, what, what you can do is actually have, I think the keys, I think you put the keystone, is it right? You put the keystone for the other regions in the other regions. I've run out of others, but you know what I mean? Like all the regions can see each other's services, but they're in a separate keystone effectively. I think that's how it's done. I don't know if you've, I guess you've not done that, Belmiro, but. Uh, just to be clear, uh, during the presentation, when I talk about regions, I was always thinking sharing the same keystone. Because for me, if you are not sharing keystone, they are completely independent OpenStack deployments. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that's true, isn't it, really? There's a long <laughs> question on the chat, um, but it's, it's like a lot of words. So I wonder, could that, Chris, just speak it or? If not, I can read through it if you, if you don't have a microphone. Sure. Let me see if my microphone works. Working. Can you hear me? It works. Perfect. Uh, so my question is uh, about neutron scaling. You mentioned that um, you had to move from cells to what regions to scale neutron. Well, to scale your networking capabilities. However, in your presentation, you mentioned that you have 30 cells and each cell has, on, on average, 200, 200 computes. So my, my question is, could you describe some of your scaling issues when it comes to Neutron at that scale that you have? Because in, in my experience, uh, one of the first scaling bottlenecks that we hit was we actually around networking and our computes scaled pretty well but a number of flows, a number, a number of instances, a number of uh, routers created by our users, they basically all started overwhelming the control plane of the Neutron. So my question is uh, whether are you whether you're using one of the standard ML2 drivers for Neutron, for example Linux Bridge or OBS, or are you using some sort of uh, custom networking solution? that lets you sidestep those issues and scale Neutron higher than what we have observed in our deployment. Right. Um, so in our case, um, each region has more or less uh, 3,000 compute nodes. So that is, these 3,000 compute nodes is what the, each Neutron installation handles. But um, we use a very simple Neutron setup to, to reach this. Um, we use the Linux bridge um, driver. Um, so it's extremely simple. So probably I don't, we don't have the issues like, uh, routers, uh, all the chattiness that, that you have. However, even though we're using the Linux bridge, the Linux agent is uh, extremely chatty and the, the load that we see is not really in the AP, in the Neutron API servers, but in the routing queue. So the scaling issues were more related with scaling the, drive, the dedicated drive team Q cluster that we have for Neutron. Um, probably if you are using a different network driver, you, you will reach these scaling issues much more early than us. Okay, so if I, can, if I could like, ask a follow-up question. My understanding that is that what you said is that you have a fairly flat network with your, with your new tenants. And those tenants don't really think about OpenStack in a, in a context of networks. They don't create their own. You basically have an OpenStack that plugs virtual machines almost directly into your uh, into your uh, underlying network, right? Exactly. Okay. So that's why when you saw the regions, and I saw and I told you that uh, we had very small regions for uh, testing new features. Uh, those regions were called, two of them, SDN1 and SDN2. 
um, because we are testing SDN functionality for the infrastructure, but it's still early days. Sure, thank you. Um, there is a question in the chat around uh, how do you share, share glands between regions? Does Glens has its own storage backend uh, and someone already provided some answer. Maybe, maybe uh, you can, like uh, Aderberg can, can already help answering that question and then someone else can, can reach, can complete that answer. Well, I can't, I can't add anything more than I just said, because we didn't implemented it uh, where I work, uh, but that's mainly the idea we have when I'm asked that question. Yeah, so your answer was that using a shared keystone with replicated Swift backend for Glance, you should be able to achieve uh, uh, Glance between regions, right? Exactly. Okay. So how did you do it, Bilmiro? So we do it in a very simple way. So our storage backend is Ceph that uh, it's running in our main data center. And um, we set up Glance, normal Glance. It's just Glance API is running, pointing to that Ceph cluster. Um, so usually you set up a different Glance in a different region because you are concern about all the latency and the network traffic between the, um, the data centers. Even when in the past we had two different data centers, we only had one Glens. Initially we deployed um, the Glens cache in the other data center. You can use that to speed up the transmission. But at some point uh, we just removed that and we relied completely only in the one Glens setup. So to have that between multiple regions, it's just pointing the region to the same glance endpoint. So when you do open stack endpoint list, you get all the endpoints and each endpoint is pointing to a region. So we, you, if you just duplicate that, the endpoint for glance in this region is the same like the other one. Um, and because you are using the same keystone, um, it's completely transparent. So they will use the same glance in the endpoint that you specify. But again, this depends in your use case. Um, we don't feel any need to use two different glances in different regions. Because actually in our case, they are in the same data center, so. Is there any other question? Um, I thought we could, if there is no more question, we could like do a quick um, uh, round around the table to to discuss like other setup because we've we've had lots of details on the CERN setup. So you're basically combining cells and regions. So I'm uh, I'm kind of curious what's the state of scaling out for others on the call. Uh, if uh, like uh, Chris, you just said that you were in the process of uh, migrating to multiple cells or regions? So Amira, I'd love to get a copy of the slides because I have other people interested in what you share with, with us here, if that's if that's possible. Um, if you um, could just, I don't know if you just publish them. Yeah, sure. Yeah, we, but will also reference, we will also reference them on the large scale seek page, like um, all yeah. the all the video meetings with presentations with the recording and the, the and the deck. Fantastic. I can talk about what we're doing. So our new OpenStack is taking off at Bloomberg. We, by new, I mean it's um, OpenStack Rocky and it's Neutron. We had other stuff with Nova Network that we're retiring. So three three data center sites, three OpenStack installations, all completely separate. But we are seeing scaling problems already with Rabbit and um, MySQL. Um, and each site is going to have basically, um, you know, additional what we call data halls. So they're not really separate sites, but they're physically separate buildings, physically separate power. So that seems like um, an obvious candidate for cells so that um, we can just partition compute and give each data hall its own control plane, its own rabbit, its own MySQL. 
Um, and I did some research on that and that seems to be the way. Um, but I learned something today, which is that that's not gonna solve scaling neutron. So we're gonna have to put our thinking caps on and make sure we, you know, we don't have like half a solution when we do that. And the scale um, is, um, you know, approximately a thousand computes per uh, location right now, but it's, it's growing every week. So it's a small thing compared to CERN, but it's still enough for us to get into trouble with scale. And um, the, um, the population is, so our, our model is more like, um, you know, a, a more traditional stuff like fairly heavy VMs. We do have, you know, containers and um, Kubernetes going on as well, but, you know, quite a few are just traditional Linux servers and uh, it's in the tens of thousands of VMs already on this, on this new platform. So um, we have to solve scaling either with cells or with, you know, extreme measures in Rabbit and MySQL. And I definitely prefer the look of cells because at the end of the day, you know, um, compartmental compartments means that even if we mess up, probably at least, you know, the site is still working to some extent rather than, you know, it's all up or it's all down when you have like a single MySQL leader serving an entire large, you know, site. So I think Belmiro's insight here is fantastic. And um, I think we're definitely doing cells. I don't know if we can go and stitch it all together into regions. Um, the other thing that I found was another learning thing was fantastic is that you actually have cells for your kind of pre-production resources like testing, because we just got a whole bunch of hardware for pre-production testing. And we were thinking of making them entirely separate OpenStack installations with their own endpoints, their own DNS entries, their own uh, keystone. But maybe that's wrong and maybe they should actually just be, you know, part of the OpenStack at that site. So that's uh, that's another great thing that that this meeting gave to us. So but thank you to, to Bel Belmiro and CERN for forging that path. I, I, I don't know what else I can share really, but uh, yeah, we're, we're kind of following along, I think, things that, Bel that CERN has already seen and solved. Um, it's, it's a nice feeling. Thank you, Chris. Uh, maybe Arno, you can share a bit on how you do scaling at OVH. Yeah, hello, everybody. Um, at OVH, we are not using cells at all for now, mostly because we were hitting some scaling issue on Neutron uh, before the one on Nova. So we decided to scale using regions. Um, so yeah, that's basically what we do. Um, on Neutron side, we are not using um, regular ML2 drivers. We built uh, or owned driver on top of Open vSwitch 1. Um, so we don't have this, um, all of the flows issues that you, you have between computes. Uh, the most uh, impact we have on Neutron server is about uh, the load that can be on, on HabitMQ RPC side because every time you restart um, agent on the compute for example if you restart agent in a bulk you will end up in a, with a high load on on the rabbit mq side and on neutron side and that's why we decided to switch to uh, scaling using region instead of sales at the beginning um, yeah sorry um, I don't know what I can say more. Uh, that's, that's great already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it's, uh, it's an interesting uh, view that you did not need to do cells actually. To... Yeah, because it was mostly neutron. And we, we know that we can do more because, for example, we are not using separated habit MQs like you do at CERN, Belmiro. We are using one big cluster for every OpenStack services. And uh, that's the thing we can upgrade. I mean, we can separate RabbitMQs in order to have one specific for Neutron, at least. Uh, that's something we can do. Uh, it's not planned yet, but uh, we, we don't know um, what will be the future because we don't want to scale region indefinitely. We, <laughs> we want to maybe uh, roll back or to find a mechanism to to hide these regions to our clients. So for now, we don't know, but um, 
roll, rolling back from region to cells will be hard because of the way it's, it's done. So having a mechanism in on top of regions to sh to hide everything uh, could be nice, but as far as I know, is there is nothing uh, magic uh, already existing on that topic. So for now, we are just getting using regions. <laughs> okay. Any question for Arno or Chris? Um, Maybe. Well, Arno touched an important point that I would like to highlight. Uh, if you restart all the computes in bulk um, in one of our regions, we'll see exactly what you observed. So, yeah. uh, RabbitMQ uh, it's, will not handle this. Even with a simple ML2 driver that we, that we use, uh, you'll not be able to handle this. So every restart needs to be very controlled. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So what you do at CERN is you are restarting it very smoothly, right? Um, yes. Yeah, just like we do. Okay. Well, we, we avoid to have a bulk restarts, but if it's yeah. needed, <laughs> uh, needs to be with some care. It's you interesting to... because yeah. it's been it's been mentioned by several people that like restarting actually triggers a lot of problems that you don't really have in regular operations. I feel like it's a, it's an interesting topic for maybe a future, like how do you avoid most of the problems uh, around, around that? Yeah, we also hit that problem. So we kind of restart compute nodes by batch to reduce the loads on Neutron. Gene, can you share more about uh, regions and, and cells in at line? Yeah, um, so we currently don't have, don't use cells because uh, we're kind of using the older version of OpenStack, which cell is not uh, quite implemented at that time. Uh, we do use regions, but uh, we um, actually separate the regions by data centers. And um, yeah, uh, for the neutron issue, everyone is hitting. Uh, so um, our solution, we go with it's uh, going with uh, like an L3 data center solution. So uh, we don't the uh, we use our uh, custom neutron driver similar, some similar to Calico. So uh, we don't need to handle all the um, ARP issues or uh, other issues. Uh, when using uh, ML2 or OBS driver, uh, next ratio OBS drivers. Yeah, uh, but uh, it's kind of a different use case because uh, when you use Calico, there's, um, or like um, L3 driver, it's um, all the uh, VMs will be uh, reachable, so there will be no, no private networks in this case. Yeah. That's it also all I have right now. It also mm -hmm. seems like uh, the choice of neutron driver is affecting how load affects the the, the cluster in general um, a lot more than I expected. <laughs> uh, and like the choice of of driver actually has a, a big impact. So that's another uh, question we should probably explore at one point. Uh, I see. Uh, Imtiaz or Amtiaz, I'm, I probably butcher your name. Sorry. Uh, can you can you share more about your uh, your setup? Sure. Uh, yeah, it's Imtiaz. You got Imtiaz. it right the first time. Yep. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So we also looked into uh, cells and regions, and I think I discussed with Belmira a, a while back. Um, but uh, currently, we're not using either. Like even though we've become quite big, we just surpassed like eleven thousand compute nodes. Uh, but, uh, but one of the reasons we could have used regions, but between our data centers, there's not much connectivity. They're completely isolated. Like it's a little complicated to set up the inter data center connection. So that's why we started with very simple uh, setup. Like so, each uh, deployment is its own uh, like OpenStack cluster, and we scaled it up to three hundred nodes. I know we could probably go even further, but uh, 
our limitation was more the new neutron provider that we chose in, in which in this case is the contrail. Uh, we are looking at Calico moving forward. Uh, so that uh, also opens up and I know talking with other operators like uh, it uh, would allow us to scale even further, like even without using cells like, so that's uh, what we are doing. But I mean, I wanna, we do see the advantage of sharing a common a keystone and glance. Like I think uh, we are noticing that our number of images we have is growing rapidly as more and more services are onboarding. So trying to replicate for each cluster uh, does add up. Uh, we are using Ceph as the backend and Ceph is now maturing more within uh, our company. So it will let us like do a lot of glance replication and having a shared glance for multiple clusters. Right now, each cluster has its own glance and like the images get copied everywhere. So we've, like one of the plan moving forward is to have a shared glance service, which like you can have different OpenStack instances, but you can still share the same like clans backend, uh, which is also backed by Ceph. So that's uh, what we are going forward with. And um, I, I think uh, some of you guys already talked about uh, Neutron being the bottleneck uh, or a decision point in terms of when you choose, when you are trying to decide whether to use cell or not. And that was our case as well. Every time we tried to consider like whether we could use let's say Contrail with Cell, the version of Contrail we had and the OpenStack combination it didn't support uh, going to Cell. So that was another point. And I'm not sure with Calico, I think I hear it's possible. We haven't uh, explored that. So uh, is, has anyone here used Calico and Cells together? Yeah. We're about to try that. <clears throat> Let us know how it goes. <laughs> Calico is um, very lightly integrated with OpenStack. I think that's a nice way of putting it. So it doesn't, we don't do much with OpenStack with Calico really together. Calico is just controlling the, the firewalling really at the endpoints. And we put the policy in separately from OpenStack. We don't use security groups. So I can't see why it would not like um, separate cells, but of course, um, famous last words, right? So yeah, I definitely, I'll report back if, um, if we find stuff. Okay, anyone else interested in sharing um, if they use regions of cells and why and or questions for people that already expressed their, like explained their setup? Well, I'm curious if uh, someone is using cells v2, if it has more than one cell v2. Or because you were still using cell v1. Oh, no, right? no, we are using, uh, no, cells, we are using cells v2. Um, oh, I okay. said cells v2 just because. <laughs> because in my mind, cell v1 was completely deprecated. It, it was completely v1. removed already. But if you are in an old uh, OpenStack version, uh, you don't have cells v2. Okay, looks like uh, they are not that popular. <laughs> so we, we would be on it already if we could have wound forward on um, OpenStack version. We're still on Rocky. We want to get yeah. to a story urgently for many reasons. And as soon as we do that, um, we're going to start testing cells um, on hardware. Um, and we think, as I mentioned, we think we're going to go large with it. It's just that we got um, uh, OpenStack with Rocky and um, Neutron and Calico working, and then this am amazing growth and load turned up, and so we've just been just keeping our head above water. So it's not that we don't want to. In fact, I'm being asked when, you know, which quarter are we delivering it this year? So <laughs> I'm going to be about to be doing it any second, really. So this talk has been incredibly timely, and I, again, thank you. I, I was just going to say we have done some work with Color Ansible and getting that able to actually configure multiple cells v2 um, but a lot of the larger deployments have been more so heavily bare metal focused that we just haven't needed that kind of nova scale out like there's just the three nova computes on three controllers 
doing fine with you know 1200 nodes of ironic for example it's just not got that far but in case someone wants to start writing that in color it's there's bits of it there <laughs> okay anyone else interested in sharing their current situation and questions but I had a question for the people running multiple regions. Um, we have a few folks doing that and we get a lot of users. Well, it, in terms of like having their application and doing like global server load balancing within the OpenStack ecosystem, that's quite hard to do. Or if you've got whether you want a Kubernetes cluster that's spanning the multiple regions or doing something outside. I don't know if people have found people gravitating towards a particular solution for that kind of thing. I guess, Bummer, in your case, all of the flat net, you're, you're all three, all the regions are connecting to the same flat network, so. OK. Yeah, yes, they are. Just wondering if the, if people have hit that. Well, well in our, our case, we took a look last year on the on the on the how how could we utilize the uh, sort of global keystone because we have a global reach reach and uh, having a, a sort of one one keystone and one horizon for the users, but that turned out to be <laughs> discussions with the people that if you find out how to do it then let me know uh, kind of thing and the other other thing that we had was this net neutron issue that we really couldn't find any kind of let's say a good solution to scaling over our about 300 nodes set up at the moment so 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 the we are still in the drawing board with the regions and cells and trying to follow the situation that what happens on the neut neutron front? Because that uh, neutron gives kind of uh, interesting day, day two problems also. If you, for example, in our case, because we are utilizing the Tenat networking and stuff like that, then guessing the quotas for the neutron elements is kind of uh, really guesstimates and then you have these eager users who can create 100 networks there and suddenly you have tens of thousands of <laughs> uh, OpenStack ports in the cloud then the Neutron is kind of ha having very much issues there. But, but, but as, a, as, a, as I said, we are still on the drawing, drawing table with this one. This one. I suppose I should also share with, with Color Ansible, we have used that to set up the um, shared keystone, shared horizon with um, then two regions, and that each region has its separate kind of Color Ansible config, or actually Kyuvi config. Mm -hmm. um, so that should be possible. I think there are Color Ansible docs on that. Okay. It depends if what tool you're using, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, if no one else uh, wants to share, I'll uh, conclude this by explaining a bit more what the large scale SIG does and our current activities in case you're interested in, in joining. So I'll just share a quick slide here. Hope you can see it. Um, so the large scale SIG is a group of, of operators and, and developers and uh, interested in facilitating running OpenStack at a large scale, um, like answering questions that operators have as they need to scale up and scale out their OpenStack clusters, but also uh, try to address some of the limitations we encounter in large OpenStack clusters, like, um, like try to detect uh, the bottlenecks and then instrument them and, and potentially push back some of those limits that force you to um, to look into scaling out solutions like regions and cells. Uh, we are meeting every two weeks 
Uh, usually it's on IRC, but um, we also do sessions like this one around a specific question uh, and kick started with, with a presentation by, by uh, some large scale SIG member uh, to try to get the discussion going. Um, the current uh, schedule for the meeting is Wednesdays at 15 UTC, that's uh, 4 p.m. Western Europe and 9 a.m. Central um, in the US. And, uh, but we, if we have like substantial participation from, from the West Coast, especially, uh, we'll probably try to rotate between, between multiple, uh, multiple times. We tried that, but nobody showed up at the other time. So we stopped doing it. And finally, um, this is like the main product of the large scale SIG. It's a wiki page called the scaling journey. And basically, uh, as you create an OpenStack cluster and you add more nodes, uh, at first you need to configure it so that it can handle some scale. Then you need to monitor it to see uh, how, how um, well or bad it runs. Uh, then you scale it up until a certain point when you have to scale out. And then obviously you have to maintain the life cycle of, of, of the installation, upgrade, etc. So those are all stages in your scaling journey. And we are trying to list the questions and provide answers that almost everyone will will have at one point so as an example the stage three has this fact here where we're saying like uh, how many compute nodes can a typical openstack cluster contain the answer is obviously it depends it's always it depends but at least it gives like a a, a range between 100 nodes and 2000 nodes depending on on the type of usage you have and uh, the api shown that you can have um, those kind of questions, we're trying to make sure that like, uh, we provide a basic answer to them and hopefully that gets people more confidence before they, before they start uh, their, their, their scaling journey with OpenStack. Um, so that's like a, the main activity of the SIG is to try to document those questions and try to extract all the knowledge of all the, 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 the participants, the OpenStack community. And so obviously this, this uh, session was really great because I feel like I learned a lot of things on, on uh, when you use cells, when you, you use regions, the, the problems it solves, the problem it does not solve. And uh, that's exactly the kind of content and uh, value that we're trying to, to create at the large scale SIG. So uh, thank you again for uh, everyone participating. Um, and thanks again, Bill Miro for kickstarting this uh, series of, of uh, video meetings. I'm not sure exactly when the next one will be, um, but uh, I'll make sure that everyone knows when we, when we schedule a new one. And in between those, if you're interested in, in joining the large scale SIG, please um, join our IRC meeting. Uh, it's, the next one is in two weeks. Anything else, anyone? Uh, uh, Kerry, I think it's important. Uh, for people to give their opinion and for us to understand if they think this is useful, if we should try this new format in the future with a different topic. Uh, what do you guys think? I think is it useful? Should we try again? We should definitely try again. I just wanted to speak for about 10 seconds. So you, some of you guys have been to Ops Meetup sessions. Uh, just to let you know, most of the team is no longer working on OpenSec or has personal issues, whatever. I'm still here in Bloomberg. So we're going to try and bring something back, but I don't know when we can do that. So I'm going to try and turn up to open to large scale SIG from now on. And maybe, um, you know, this is my new home for these things, but um, I'm still working on OpenStack ops meetups when the world comes back to normality, but the rest of the team probably isn't. So that's probably why we've been so quiet. So in case that's of use to anybody. Well, that, that's a great point. We're one of the reasons why we're doing these video meetings is to provide some virtual uh, discussions around operations of OpenStack. When when we had the Ops Meetup, it, it was great to a great way to share that experience. But uh, I feel like even in the world of tomorrow, we'll have to have some kind of mix between in in person and virtual events anyway. So I can totally see how we can. Uh, do the ops meetup for like having this anchor point and have all those personal relationships building and at the same time do um, maybe with less frequency but um, do those virtual discussions as well so that's the, the best of both worlds i think 
Thank you. We're we're over over time. Uh, thanks again, Belmiro. Um, everyone else, please, uh, if you if you are happy with with the session, make sure that uh, you mention it in the chat. I'll uh, keep it open for a few minutes, and um, and uh, we'll uh, let you know when the next one is. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye.